Turn in your lecture notes to the standard costing example and we'll get started. The standard cost for one unit of product is direct material, we need four pounds at 50 cents per pound or $2 per unit, direct labor, two hours at $8 per hour or $16 per unit, variable overhead, two hours at $1.50 per hour or $3 per unit. The total per unit cost is $21 for the variable manufacturing costs. The company produced 1,000 units during May and purchased 5,000 pounds of material at 60 cents per pound and used 4,500 pounds in production. Additionally, the company paid 2,200 direct labor hours at $7.80 per hour and total variable overhead cost incurred amounted to $3,410. Calculate the materials, labor, and variable overhead variances and determine if favorable or unfavorable. Consider who management would likely hold accountable for each variance. So we have here a fairly comprehensive example looking at the variances. We're going to start by looking at the direct material price variance. Here you want to compare what you should have paid for materials to what you did pay for materials. So in parentheses, We'll take the standard price per pound and compare that to the actual price per pound. I always take standard minus actual in parentheses. Then you'll multiply by the quantity purchased to get the total dollar amount of the variance. Now remember, for materials, we thought that we should use four pounds and we should pay 50 cents per pound for each unit. And then we purchased 5,000 pounds of material at 60 cents per pound, and we used 4,500 pounds. This is the information we're going to need for both of our materials variances. The standard price is 50 cents per pound. The actual price is 60 cents per pound. And we bought 5,000 pounds. This will give us a $500 variance, and it is unfavorable. When you pay $0.60 cents per pound that you should have paid $0.50 cents per pound, it's going to cost the company more money, and it's an unfavorable variance. One thing to note, we did use the 5,000 pounds purchased, not the 4,500 pounds used in production to make this calculation. Also observe that we want to calculate these variances in a total dollar amount. It's not sufficient to tell management that we paid 10 cents a pound too much for our materials. We want to tell them the total dollar impact on cost. And this will hold true for all of the variances. Now the direct material usage variance in parentheses, we are going to isolate the difference in what we should have used in production and compare that to what we did use in production. And we'll multiply by the standard price per pound to get the total dollar impact on the cost. Now the standard quantity, we know that we should have used four pounds per unit, and we know that we made 1,000 units. We should have used 4,000 pounds to make the 1,000 units. When we go to put that in our formula, we can see that we should have used 4,000 pounds and we did use 4,500 pounds. So right away you can tell that we have another unfavorable variance because we used too many pounds in production. To convert this to a total dollar amount, we'll multiply by the 50 cents per pound. That gives us a $250 variance and it is unfavorable. Notice here that we did use the direct material used, not the direct material purchased. It's important that you notice that difference. And also, we did compute the total dollar impact on costs. The total direct material variance, if you add those two together, we had a price variance that was 500 unfavorable. We had a usage variance that was 250 unfavorable. That means that our total materials variance was $750 unfavorable. We can tell management we spent $750 too much on materials, 
500 of that was due to paying a higher price. 250 of it was due to using too much material. Remember, the purchasing department manager will typically be responsible for paying the right price for the right quality of material. And the production manager will be responsible for the efficient usage of that material. Now let's look at our labor variances. We'll start with the direct labor rate variance. And you'll note that this is computed almost identical to the direct material price variance. In parentheses, we'll take our standard direct labor rate per hour minus the actual direct labor rate per hour, and we'll multiply by the actual quantity of hours. Now you see here the information about labor. We should have used two hours for each unit. We should have paid $8 per hour. We did pay 2,200 direct labor hours at 780 per hour. So when we're looking at the rate variance, we can see just by looking at the information that while we should have paid $8 per hour, we paid $7.80 per hour. So we're going to have a favorable variance here. Plugging in $8 per hour minus $7.80 per hour says we saved $0.20 cents per hour and we paid 2,200 hours. This calculates out to be a $440 variance, and it is favorable since we paid a lower wage rate than planned. Moving on to the efficiency variance, now we're trying to figure out if we use the right number of hours to produce our units. We'll take the standard quantity allowed minus the actual quantity used times the standard direct labor rate per hour. The standard quantity allowed will factor in that we should have used two hours per unit. We produced a thousand units. We should have used 2,000 hours. This is where the idea of flexible budgeting comes into the calculations for standard cost variances. We base these on actual production, not planned. All right, plugging back in, 2,000 hours were allowed to be used. We did use 2,200 hours, so we used 200 hours too many. And we should have paid $8 per hour. This will result in a $1,600 variance and it is unfavorable because you used too many hours. Now you may ask, why do we use the standard direct labor rate here? And the reason is we want this to be solely due to efficiency, not partially due to the rate. So if we multiplied the 200 hour difference by 780, the variance would be a mix of rate and efficiency. This ensures that this variance is isolated solely due to efficiency. Our total direct labor variance, if you look at what you've calculated, you'll recall that you had a rate variance of 440 favorable, an efficiency variance of 1,600 unfavorable. Because one is favorable and one is unfavorable, you will not add these together. You will net them out and it comes to 1,160 unfavorable. It's unfavorable because the unfavorable variance exceeds the favorable. Recall that the rate variance will be the responsibility of the HR department to ensure that they hire the right people, or it could be the production manager to ensure that that manager uses the right skill level for the right jobs and does not have uh, too much overtime. The efficiency variance is typically the responsibility of the production manager. That is his or her job to oversee the efficient usage of the laborers. Finally, we're going to look at the variable overhead variances. So remember, 
we should have used two hours at $1.50 per hour. So our standard variable overhead rate is $1.50 per hour. And the total variable overhead cost incurred was 3,410. And that was for 2,200 hours. So our variable overhead rate variance, we will take the standard overhead rate per direct labor hour minus the actual overhead rate per direct labor hour. So we isolate in parentheses the difference in rate, and then we multiply by the actual quantity of labor hours. We need to calculate our actual variable overhead rate. And if you'll remember, we spent $3,410 during the period on variable overhead and that was for 2,200 hours. That translates to an average rate of spending of $1.55 per direct labor hour. We should have spent on average $1.50 per hour for factory electricity, uh, factory supplies, those other variable overhead costs. And we did spend $1.55, so you can see this is going to be unfavorable. We spent too much. We spent that on 2,200 hours, and that gives us a $110 unfavorable variance. And finally, we'll calculate the variable overhead efficiency variance. And this is one that is harder to see what it's trying to isolate. And what we are doing is going to figure out how using the wrong number of labor hours affects the incurrence of variable overhead costs. So in other words, if you work too many labor hours, would it cause you to have too much electricity cost? You'll take your standard quantity allowed minus your actual quantity used times your standard overhead rate per direct labor hour. So the quantity in here is referring to labor hours. We know that we should have used two hours per unit for a thousand units. We should have used 2,000 hours. So that is our standard quantity allowed. We actually used 2,200 hours. And our standard rate is $1.50 per hour. That leaves us with a $300 unfavorable variance. We used too many hours, which caused us to incur too much electricity, extra supplies costs. This is trying to measure the impact of using an extra 200 hours and what impact that had on the variable overhead cost incurred. If we summarize our variable overhead variances, our rate variance was 110 unfavorable. Our efficiency variance was $300 unfavorable. So we spent $410 too much on our variable overhead costs. This will be the responsibility of various managers, so we won't be holding you accountable for that. We do want to take a minute to look at any possible interrelationships. Typically, you're looking for one favorable variance causing an unfavorable or an unfavorable variance causing a favorable variance. For example, here, our direct labor rate variance was favorable, which means we paid a lower wage rate, but it may indicate we used unskilled labor. So we paid $7.80 when we were allowed to pay $8, but it might be because we hired unskilled labor. This could result in labor inefficiencies and the inefficient use of materials. In other words, this favorable rate variance might have caused the unfavorable direct labor efficiency and or an unfavorable direct material usage variance. But remember, the direct material price variance um, was higher and may indicate higher quality. 
So these are the kinds of things that we're looking for when we're trying to isolate, did one variance impact the other? We can't go over all of the scenarios, but this is the way you need to think about these is did a favorable variance impact an unfavorable variance or vice versa? That's it for this problem. So we, you'll want to get some extra practice with standard costing through the extra problems in the notes and your homework assignments.